In this video, I'm going to show you how to add vibrato to a string bend, and I'm going to share with you the number one reason that guitar players struggle with this technique. <laughs> Hey there, this is James for James Shipway Guitar. Thanks for tuning into another one of my lessons. Now in this video, we're gonna look at how to add vibrato to a string bend. And I get a lot of emails and questions about this all the time. So in this lesson, I'm gonna share with you the essentials of nailing this technique. And I'm also gonna share with you four key points which you need to really get it sounding awesome. So let's dive in. To get a good sounding vibrato on a bend, we need a good sounding string bend in the first place. And this is where hand position and bending technique is very important. So let's have a quick look at that. I'm gonna bend this B string note up at the eighth fret. Now, I like to bend with my thumb over the top of the neck. I find this gives me a really good grip around the guitar neck and a good grip on the string and makes it easy to push it up. You'll also notice that if I'm bending with my third finger, these two fingers are also helping to push the string. They're not hanging down there somewhere or out there somewhere. They're helping me get a good grip on the string and also providing extra strength to move it. If you're bending with a weak hand position, like maybe with your thumb back behind the neck or not backing up the bending finger with other fingers, you're probably not going to have the stability or the necessary control to add a good sounding vibrato to your string bend. When we vibrato a bend, we're really bending up then letting the bend down a tiny bit and then pushing it back up. And we're doing that over and over. Now, important thing here is we only want to let the bend down a very small amount. Okay, so we've looked at the mechanics of actually adding vibrato to a string bend, but here's four crucial tips now to get the technique really sounding awesome. Tip one is to make your vibrato sound rhythmic. We don't want it to sound like this. We want it to be even and smooth rhythmically. So it's got like a rhythmic sort of pulse to it. You can hear my vibrato's going ba da ba da ba da ba da ba. It's got some rhythm to it. This is gonna just make it sound more musical and make it sound just controlled and slick when we use it. Another crucial thing is that we don't want our vibrato to sound out of tune. So when we let the bend down slightly and then bend it back up, it's super important that we bend it back up to pitch. Otherwise, we're basically gonna get an out of tune bend like this. So we've gotta make sure when we let the string down, we're pushing it all the way back up to pitch so that the overall effect of the vibrato is an in-tune note rather than just a sort of wavering out of tune bend. For really polished vibrato, we need it to be consistent and we need it to be even. Now we've already talked about giving it sort of a, a rhythmic even shape, but we want the sort of change in pitch to be similar each time we let the string down. If we're letting the string down a tiny bit one second and a lot more the next, we're not gonna get an even sound to our vibrato. So check that you're letting it down roughly the same amount each time you let the string down before you push it up. If you're doing that and you're making it rhythmic as well, then you're well on your way to getting a good sounding vibrato on your string bends. Tip number four is one of the main problems guitar players have with vibratoing string bend. And they find that when they add the vibrato to the bend, the bend just kind of fizzles out. So how can we stop this happening? Now the secret here is as we vibrato the string, we have to keep pressing it into the neck. We have to pin it firmly to the fingerboard, even though we're vibrating, vibratoing it. If we release the pressure slightly, we're gonna lose the string or we're gonna lose the note. So it might seem a bit strange to be keeping a strong grip on the string, even though you're letting it down slightly, but that's what we need to do. Think about pinning it firmly to the fingerboard of the guitar and then just moving that pressure point or that contact point up and down slightly. Okay, so that's how you add vibrato to your string bends, but it isn't easy and it takes a little bit of practice to get, so just work on it patiently and you'll see some improvements over time. Now, how can we practice it? Well, one of the best ways I think is to take a scale that we use all the time, like the minor pentatonic scale. I'm gonna play it down in A at the fifth fret. Wow. 
and take out three of the most common string bends from that pattern, which we use all the time, and practice adding vibrato to them like this. So I'm going to use the seventh fret on the G string, eighth fret on the B string, and eighth fret on the top E. This gives you a way to practice them, which is similar to how you use them when you're actually playing licks and solos. If you like this lesson, then I'd like to offer you a free VIP pass to my exclusive members only area. There you'll find a power pack of my very best lessons waiting for you. Boost your playing technique and speed with my Chop Builder series, explode your soloing skills with my improvisation bootcamp lessons, and a lot more. Grab your pass and get instant access right now simply by clicking the link underneath this video. So that's all for today, and I really hope that what we've covered in this lesson will help you to really nail that brato on your string bends and get it sounding great. So thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.